Today's poet, L. Virginia French, is descended from leading families of Virginia and Pennsylvania. She was born on the eastern shore of the Old Dominion at the fine old county seat of her maternal grandfather, Captain Thomas Parker, an officer in the Army of the Revolution. Deprived at a very early age of her mother, a gentlewoman of rare beauty and excellence, she and her sister were sent to Washington, Pennsylvania to be educated under the care of their grandmother. Guided and guarded by this truly estimable woman, to whom this parlor host confesses herself indebted for her best points of character, they completed a course of study at the female seminary of that place and graduated with the first honors. In 1856, Mrs. French published a collection of her poems under the title of Wind Whispers. Her poetry, like that of Mrs. Vertner Johnson, would seem to be the natural outflow of her exuberant and harmonious being. We sit down to analyze it and find ourselves floating away on a tide of rippling rhyme, forgetful of all but the delicious motion and the silvery tintinabulation. Yet many of the poems of this writer reveal undercurrent, which require only the hissing bolt of circumstance to stir them into crested billows of feeling and expression, as we hear in Miserere of the Pines. There's a voice upon the hilltop and a song within the vale, fairy carols in the woodland, spirit whispers on the gale a merry mermaid chorus in the ocean's sparry caves, and a bold, triumphant peon from the ever-tossing waves. But sweeter to my soul, when the autumn day declines, comes the stately, solemn, swelling miserere of the pines. There is music in the morning, there is harmony at eve. In the rich, fantastic overtures, the boughs and breezes weave. Dreamy melody at noontide from the willow-hidden rills, or the hunter's bugle sounding on the far-off breezy hills. But when round the brow of midnight red the starry serpent shines, I love the stately, solemn miserere of the pines. When the firefly beacon glitters through the twilight everglades and the birds have sunk to slumber in the woodland colonnades, comes a murmur like the wild bee in the meadow lily's bell that deepens to the thunders of an organ's rolling swell as the night wind creeping slowly through 10,000 leafy tines wakes the stately solemn swelling miserere of the pines. The palm in sensuous beauty and the oak's defiant pride bow as the banded tempest sweeps the forest phalanx wide. But the keen midwinter wind upon the ocean's rocky shore calls forth from out the dark pine grove a mimic surge's roar. And as the serried waters pass their storm embattled lines, seem marching to the stately miserere of the pines. Funeral anthems float far down the dim cathedral nave, where crested valor's marble form lies shrouded for the grave. But not so proud a dirge is his as that which echoes wide above the pilgrim lone who perished on the mountainside as through the wild witch hazel tree that o'er his rest reclines, steals on the solemn swelling miserere of the pines. Oh, many a brilliant melody at midnight revels free, and music at the day spring sounds her hymn of jubilee. But like the thousand echoes that awake within the heart, strong in their very gentleness a blessing to impart by bringing buried jewels from the spirit's secret mines is the stately, solemn, swelling miserere of the pine. Sit 
de penser un thème où ton âme est belée, te dit de craindre ou désespérer. Si tu sens sous les doigts une corde mouillée, et si tu chantes. Bonheur 